Hi, it's Ryan from Knights Around a Table, and this is Alchemists, a worker placement logical deduction game for two to four players. As usual, the rules gremlin is here to let us know when things get a little confusing. Let me show you how to play. In Alchemists, you and your friends play academic wizards trying to determine the secret building blocks of various potion ingredients and then publishing theories on your research for money and fame. You'll experiment by combining ingredients in your cauldron and then, using a free app, discover which potion you've made by drinking it yourself or feeding it to a hapless intern. Tracking your results plays out like a logic puzzle. Once you think you know the molecule that underlies an ingredient, you can publish a theory on it. As in real life, you don't necessarily have to be right. And if you go on a hunch, your opponents might successfully debunk your theory. Key to playing alchemists is understanding the game's logical underpinning. There are eight ingredients in the game. Each one of these ingredients corresponds to a different magical molecule, which the game calls alchemicals. Which alchemical corresponds with which ingredient is randomized at the beginning of the game when you fire up the app. Your main goal is to figure out these relationships and to exploit that knowledge for your own game. An alchemical is made of three circles. A circle can be red, green, or blue. It can be big or small. And it can be positive or negative. When two ingredients are combined, if each underlying alchemical has a circle with a matching sign, a matching color, and a different size, those two ingredients will make a certain potion. A big and a little red positive circle combination makes a healing potion. A big and a little green positive combo makes a speed potion. A big and little blue positive combo makes a wisdom potion. The same types of combinations with negative symbols make potions with the opposite effects. Poison, paralysis, and insanity. When you combine two ingredients, you scan those cards using the app, and it tells you what kind of potion they make. You don't know the corresponding alchemicals yet, but now you have a hint. So let's say that a toad and a feather make a healing potion. You find those two ingredients in your secret notebook and place a healing token where they intersect. You know that neither of the two underlying alchemicals for the toad or the feather can have a red minus circle because that combination wouldn't give you a healing potion. So you can cross out all the alchemicals with red minus circles beneath both of those ingredients. A big part of the game is making deductions like these to narrow down which alchemicals fit which ingredients. Each ingredient also has one exact opposite. When two opposites combine, they create a neutral potion. So an alchemical matchup like this one, where none of the circles would make anything viable, produces a neutral potion. If your phone's camera is wonky, you can punch in the ingredients by hand. There's also a web app if you don't own a phone. Each new game session generates a code, so everyone at the table can download the app, punch in the game code, and get the same results when they scan their ingredients. And if you're Amish, you can elect a game master to oversee this board, where the randomization can be done manually, and you can hand over your cards to the game master and ask which results they produce. But whichever sucker is in charge of that board doesn't get to play because the answers are right there. Still, it's nice to know that Alchemist is playable even after the zombie apocalypse. With that groundwork laid, here's how you actually play Alchemists. The game is played in six rounds. The first step is choosing player order. Beginning with the starting player and going clockwise, you determine how early you're willing to get out of bed by placing your colored flask on one of these spaces. The later you wake up, the sweeter the perk you get. One ingredient card, one favor card and one ingredient card, three ingredient cards, and so on. These cards are all drawn from their face down decks. If you wake up mega early, you have to pay a coin to buy yourself breakfast. Each of these spaces can accommodate only one player. The space at the very bottom of the track is for wizards who have been paralyzed by drinking a bum potion. I'll talk about that later. Once my face starts out. 
In the first round, only these areas are accessible. Depending on the player count, you'll have between four to six cubes you can place. But in the first round, you only get to use three of them. The extras get stacked down here until round two. Once everyone has chosen a spot on the turn order track and collected their goodies, play begins in reverse turn order. The player who woke up the latest goes first, paradoxically. This is because the late rising player is only declaring his actions and letting the other players know what he intends to do. During this step, if you've slept in the longest, you play all of your cubes to the different action spaces in one go, on the lowest rung. Then the next sleepiest player places his or her cubes one row up, and so on. When everyone is finished declaring their actions, the first actions get resolved from top to bottom. So the player who wakes up earliest sees what everyone else is going to do, reacts accordingly, and has his or her preferred actions take effect first before everything else is resolved. If a row has multiple boxes, you can play cubes to declare multiple actions. If the boxes are connected, you have to play two cubes together to take that action. So here, the first action costs one cube, and the second action costs two cubes. In a two-player game, the spaces marked with a three aren't used. After everyone else has placed their cubes, actions are resolved like this. The top row, first action, happens first. Then the next row with cubes in it, first action. Then the following row, first action. Then the first row, second action, then the second action in this row. So top to bottom in columns. The areas around the academy resolve in a specific order. So this one first, then this one, then this one, then this one, all the way around the school in an arc and ending with the drink a potion space. Remember that in the first round, these spaces are unavailable. If you foraged by playing one or more of your cubes here, you can either take a face up ingredient card or draw one face down from the deck. These cards don't get replenished until the next round, so it's first come, first served. If there are no face up cards left, you have to try your luck with the deck. When all of the foraging actions have been taken, discard any remaining face up ingredients. Taking one or more transmutation actions lets you discard an ingredient face down in exchange for one gold. If you took an action here, you can pay gold to buy one of the face up artifact cards by paying the cost in the top left corner of the card. Cards with immediate effects take effect uh, immediately, and other cards give you powers that last the whole game long. In either case, you play these cards out in front of you. Most are worth points at the end of the game. Like the ingredient cards, artifact cards aren't replenished, but new ones get dealt out later in the game. These spaces let you combine two ingredient cards in your cauldron to make a potion. Put the cards on the little ledge, and then, depending on where you placed your cubes, Drink the potion yourself, or feed it to a student. Tap the correct option in the app, scan the cards, and discard the ingredients. Then show the other players the result you got. Take a matching token and put it on your secret player board, and draw any logical conclusions you can in your notebook. You also have to place a token on your public board so that everyone knows the different potions you've made. If the potion a student drank is positive, it's all good. If it's negative, then each wizard who tests a potion on a student after you has to pay one gold to the bank. That's pretty funny, right? If you chose to drink the potion yourself, the experiment is free, but you might suffer the effects of a negative potion. If you drink an insanity potion, you lose one reputation point. If you drink poison, your cube goes into this quarantine space and you'll have one less cube to use in the next round. If you drink a paralysis potion, you move your flask to the very last space on the turn order track. It's hard to get out of bed when you can't feel your legs, so you're waking up dead last next round. If multiple players get paralyzed, they wake up in the order in which they were paralyzed. At the end of each round, the starting player token gets passed clockwise, skipping over anyone who's paralyzed. If everyone's paralyzed, the starting player token goes to the next player who would have been starting player, despite the paralysis. At the beginning of round two, everyone can claim their extra action cubes. The more complicated action spaces are now available. Here's what's up. 
From round two onward, a new adventurer shows up here wanting to buy some potions. This is a way for you to both test out some ingredients and make some money on the side. It costs two cubes to sell a potion to an adventurer. The bottom of the tile shows which potions the adventurer wants to buy. This meathead wants a healing potion, a speed potion, or an insanity potion. <laughs> Notice he's not interested in a wisdom potion. When it comes time to resolve the potion selling area, there's a whole bluffing mini game to reorder everyone's cubes that I'll talk about in a moment. Hang tight and we'll loop back around to it. When it's your turn to sell a potion, you take one of your two cubes and place it under the potion you intend to sell. This blocks that potion off from your opponents, and they can't sell that potion in this round. The game board is double-sided. In a three-player game, playing a cube on either of the first two potions blocks off both for the other players. In a two-player game, the three spaces aren't used, which means only one player can sell a potion. That doesn't mean that only one player can place their cubes in this area, though. The number of potions that can be sold is always player count minus one, so somebody's cubes might go to waste. Alchemists is a cutthroat game. Now's a good time to mention that if it's ever your turn to perform an action and you get completely hosed like this, you can decline your action by throwing your cubes into this space on the board. At the end of the round, you draw one favor card for every two cubes you had to abandon. One abandoned cube gets you nothing. So one cube indicates which potion you're trying to sell. The other cube goes on this guarantee of quality list. If you guarantee you'll make the exact potion, same color, same sign, that you pledged to make, you can charge four coins for it. If you think you can make a potion with the right sign but you're fuzzy on the color, you choose this option. If you think you can make a neutral potion, or a potion where the sign doesn't come out the opposite of what the adventurer is expecting, you choose this guarantee for two coins. If you're a guaranteed peddler of unmitigated garbage, you can always count on getting one coin for your concoction. A super important and easy to miss point is that these spaces aren't exclusive. Multiple players can offer the same guarantee. As with drinking a potion, you set up the ingredients in your cauldron and select Sell Potion. Then you tell the app which potion you pledged to make. The app won't tell you which exact potion you made, but it will tell you which guarantee you met. You discard the ingredients and show the results from the app to your opponents. If the result from the app is as good or better than the guarantee you made on the board, you sell the potion for the coins listed next to your guarantee. If you pooched it and the result is worse than your guarantee, you don't get any money for your potion. And if your result is a no smoking symbol or a cruddy black bottle, you lose one point of reputation. But the results you get can also help you whittle down the logic puzzle in your notebook. If you got the null symbol, you know those two ingredients neutralize each other. Neutralizing pairs of alchemicals are separated by dark and light color banding in your notebook. If you tried to make a health potion and you got this symbol, you know you got the plus sign correct, but the color is wrong. So. You made either a green speed or blue wisdom potion. You can put a multicolored token like this one in your notebook to remember the result. You also know that your ingredients didn't neutralize each other, so you can cross those alchemicals out. If you got this symbol, you know you mixed a negative potion, but it could be any color. Use a white negative token to remember that. You don't have to put these tokens out on your public board like you did when you were experimenting. Now, this whole potion selling process is obviously high stakes, especially when one player might get left high and dry by being last on the list. That's why I mentioned there's this extra bluffing mini game to reorder the cubes before the action spaces get resolved. Let me show you how that works. If multiple players want to sell a potion, then before anything happens here, everyone gets a chance to offer the adventurer a discount by choosing a card from their personal discount deck. The players each pick a discount, and everyone reveals their cards at the same time. The cubes are then reordered by whoever offered the deepest discount with the most happy faces on the card. If players are tied for happy faces, you maintain the original order between those players. This discount affects your guarantee, though. You can't guarantee a potion at a level where the discount would take the potion price to zero or below. 
So if you offer a discount of three coins, your only choice is to guarantee your potion at the four coin level. If selling a potion wasn't complicated enough, there's one extra mechanic to keep in mind. This track, where you gain and lose reputation, is divided into zones. Blue, green, and red. If your flask is in the green zone, you get one extra smiley face added to your bid. In the blue zone, you get one extra smiley face on your bid, and you get paid one extra coin for any potion you sell. In the red zone, you have to charge one less gold for your potion because word gets around that your potions are hot garbage. This means that if you're in the red zone, you can't offer a three coin discount because no guarantee will take your potion price above zero. There's also a rubber banding effect that happens in these zones. Whenever you lose reputation when your flask begins in the green zone, you lose an extra point of reputation. This is because people expected better of you. When you lose reputation when your flask is sitting in the blue zone, you lose an additional two points. But every time you lose reputation in the red zone, you lose one point less. Whew, okay, are we finished learning how to sell a potion yet? Boy, that was tough. How you doing, still hanging in there? Okay, good. Buckle up. <laughs> on to the most complex spaces on the board. Publishing and debunking theories. When you place cubes on these spaces, you can either publish a theory you have about which ingredient represents which alchemical symbol, or you can agree with someone else's theory that has already been published. It costs one gold to publish a theory. Take an alchemical symbol and place it on a particular ingredient's book. You can only publish a theory for an ingredient that doesn't already have a theory published. Then you put one of your colored seals on the book to put your name on the theory. You immediately get one point of reputation. Note that your theory doesn't actually have to be correct. Well, that's where hedging comes into play. On the other side of your seal is a secret bet indicating how confident you are in your own theory. At the end of the game, all will be revealed and you'll find out which ingredients correctly map on to which alchemical symbols. Your gold and silver starred seals get you five or three points at the end of the game, but only if they're on a theory that's correct. The unstarred seals aren't worth any points, but they do protect you against a wild guess in case someone tries to debunk your theory. We'll see how that works in a moment. For now, if you're unsure about the sign of a certain color in an alchemical, whether it's positive or negative, place a seal with that color on the book. If you want to ride another player's coattails, you can endorse a theory. You pay one gold to the bank and one gold to the player whose theory you're endorsing. And then you put one of your seals on that ingredient's book. You don't earn any reputation for doing this and you can't endorse your own theories. But if you use a starred seal, the endorsement could be worth some points to you at the end of the game if the theory proves correct. Why bother using an unstarred seal to endorse a theory if you're not going to get any points for it? Well, endorsements also count towards the top alchemist prize, which we'll look at shortly. You can also win grants. If you publish or endorse theories on two of the ingredients listed on one of these grant tiles, you take the tile, place it face down on your public board, and take two coins from the bank. The tile will be worth points to you at the end of the game. For your second grant and beyond, you have to publish or endorse theories for three of the ingredients on one of the available grant tiles. Grant tiles are first come, first served. It's entirely possible that one of your opponents is full of baloney and has published a bogus theory. If you have better information, you can debunk theories by playing your cubes here. If you successfully debunk a theory, you get two reputation points. Alchemists has master and apprentice variants. You can change modes by pressing a toggle button in the app to switch between them. Debunking is slightly more complicated in the master variant. Here's how it works in apprentice mode. Select debunk theory from the app and put the phone out in the middle of the table. You can only select an ingredient that has a theory published. You're trying to prove that the sign on one of the colors on the theory token is wrong. Tap the color you're disproving and select Confirm. The app will reveal the proper sign for that color in that ingredient's alchemical. 
If it matches the theory's token, you messed up. You lose one point of reputation. You've also just provided information to your opponents that they might not already have. If the sign is the opposite of what's on the token for that color, you've successfully debunked the theory. You get two reputation points. You kick the theory token off the book like it stopped paying rent. You flip over all the seals on the theory to expose the sloppy scholarship. Anyone who used a starred seal loses five points of reputation. Anyone who used an unstarred seal with a color that doesn't match the one you disproved loses five reputation points too. If the seal matches the color you just disproved, that player is safe from repercussions. All of the seals get booted off the book and can't be reused for the rest of the game. Note that players don't lose any grants they earned after their bogus theories are exposed. If you successfully debunk a theory and you have a cube on the published theory space, then you can skip the queue and immediately publish a new theory. As long as that new theory is either about the ingredient you just debunked a theory on, or your new theory uses the alchemical token you just debunked. You can't republish the exact same theory that you just debunked if you're publishing immediately, but there's nothing stopping you from publishing a bogus theory that you and everyone at the table already knows is false later on in the game. We'll see why you might want to do that in a moment. You can even debunk your own theory. If you successfully debunk it, you gain two points, but if you didn't hedge your bet correctly, you lose five points for a net loss of three rep. You lose the three points off your current reputation track score instead of going up to and then losing five. It seems like a picky point, but it matters because of the way those modifiers on the three scoring zones work. In the master debunking variant, you have to ask the app whether the ingredient in question plus another ingredient will make a certain potion. You don't have to use ingredient cards to do this. Let's say someone posted this theory of feathers, and let's say you suspect that the blue aspect of feathers is actually negative, not positive, because you know that if you combine a feather with a toad, you get an insanity potion. So in the app, you punch in feather plus toad, and then the insanity symbol. Then you tell the table that you intend to prove that the blue aspect of the published theory is wrong. You push the confirm button. The app will either confirm or deny that feather plus toad equals insanity. If you fail to debunk the theory, you lose two points as before. If you're right, then all the consequences from the apprentice variant happen as usual. It's possible that your demonstration disproves two published theories. Let's say that before you can debunk the bogus feather theory, some goober publishes the theory that Toad's alchemical has a negative blue aspect. Your demonstration disproves both theories, so you debunk them both at once. You get rid of the tokens, you flip all the seals, and hand out the consequences. Some players may stand to lose 10 points of reputation with a move like this. In some cases, you can show that two theories can't possibly coexist. If this was the theory of mushrooms, and this was the theory of fiddleheads, and you ask the app if these two ingredients make a strength potion, and the app says yes, then something's not right. These theories can't both be correct, because one of these two green circles would have to be small and the other one large. You still get two points for debunking, but you don't flip over all the seals and kick out the theories because it's not clear which of these two theories is wrong. But you do put conflict tokens on those theories. These theories no longer count towards earning players any grants or towards the top alchemist award, which we'll talk about soon. If a theory with a conflict token is fully debunked later on, both conflict tokens get removed and the once conflicted theory is treated normally again even though it may still be wrong. If you demonstrate a conflict that's already being demonstrated, you lose one reputation point. Nobody has time for your plagiarism, pal. At the end of every round, whoever has the most published theories and endorsements gets the Top Alchemist Award, which is worth one point. Theories in conflict don't count towards this award. 
all tied players get one point. Note that it still doesn't matter if these theories are correct or not, you just rack up points every round anyways. It's almost as if the system encourages you to publish bogus scientific theories. Hmm. The unused cubes in this space get returned to their players. Every two unused cubes earns one favor card. A single cube gets nothing. Cubes that wound up in the hospital after their owners drank poison get moved to the unused cubes space, where they can be retrieved at the end of next round. Move a new adventurer tile onto the board. At the beginning of rounds three and five, you'll uncover a conference tile. Put it in this space on the board. The conferences happen after the drink potion actions are resolved. The conference tiles are double-sided. Use one side for the apprentice variant and the other side for the master variant. Players who meet the conference requirements gain points, and players who don't lose points. So this one says if you've published or endorsed at least two theories, you gain a reputation point. If you've published or endorsed only one theory, you lose a reputation point. And if you've published or endorsed zero theories, you lose two reputation points. The conference tiles also make you cycle the artifact cards. At the first conference, scrap the artifacts and replace them with the level 2 cards. And likewise, knock out the cards and replace them with level 3 artifacts during the second conference. Trash all the face-up ingredients and deal 5 new ones. Shuffle the deck if you run out of cards. Take the flasks off the order spaces, except any that are paralyzed. The starting player token gets passed clockwise, skipping over any paralyzed players. In the final round, the drink potion test on student space is covered up by this exhibition board. The board is double-sided to accommodate different player counts. Select final round on the app. The exhibition gives you a chance to show off your potion making skills, and to get rid of any leftover ingredient cards. When it's your turn, move a cube beneath the potion you intend to make. Put the ingredients in your cauldron, tap Exhibit Potion in the app, tell the judges which potion you're attempting to make, and scan your cards. You lose a reputation point if you fail to make that exact potion, and you have to put your cube down here. If you succeed, you gain a point of reputation, and you put your cube beneath that potion. This limits the options for the other players. If you succeed but you're not the first exhibitor, your cube goes in here and you don't get any points. But you do get the chance to pick up some points for mixing the opposite potion. If you spend cubes and ingredient cards to demonstrate both the positive and negative versions of a certain color, whether or not you're the first to do so, you prove that you've mastered that color, and you gain two reputation points. Like the other spaces, the exhibition is optional. Once the exhibition is over, finish out the round by awarding the top alchemist prize and taking care of the unused cubes, as usual. At the end of the final round, the reputation points you've earned turn into victory points. This is to prevent the different zone reputation biases from swinging your score up and down as you count up the final points. The zones are no longer in effect. Tally up the points from your artifact cards and your grant tiles. Unused favor cards are worth two gold pieces each. You can buy extra points for three gold a piece. Keep your leftover gold in case you need to break a tie. Then tap the show answers button on the app for the big reveal. The app will show you once and for all which alchemical corresponds to which ingredient. Flip the seals on the theories one by one. For every correct theory, the players score the points on their seals. Colored seals used to hedge bets don't earn any points. If a theory is wrong, players who used starred seals lose four points. An unstarred seal that's improperly hedged loses the player four points as well, but a properly hedged seal doesn't cost the player any points. To determine whether a seal is properly hedged or not, compare the wrong theory against the correct theory. If two or more circles are the wrong symbol, none of the seals are properly hedged. If only one of the circles has the wrong sign, and that circle matches the seal, the seal is properly hedged. If it doesn't match, it's not properly hedged. Remember that hedging your bet with a seal means that you are unsure about a single color. Ignore any conflict tokens when scoring. The player with the most victory points wins. Leftover coins break ties. If coins are tied, the game is tied. Guess you have to play again. 
To set up the game, flip the player board to the proper side based on player count. Shuffle the adventurer tiles and put one back in the box at random. Slip the first conference tile in under the second adventurer and the second conference tile above the bottom adventurer. The conferences are double-sided depending on whether you're playing the apprentice or master variant. Split the artifact deck into levels 1, 2, and 3 and shuffle each stack. Deal three cards face up from each deck. The cards in the 2 and 3 stacks can't be bought until those conferences come up, but everyone can see what's on the horizon so they can plan out their strategy accordingly. Result tokens go here, money goes here, and five ingredients get dealt to the board. Put the ingredients deck here. Each player takes a public board with two coins and six, five, or four cubes for a two, three, or four player game. You get three cubes in the first round and pile the leftovers on the adventurer tiles for round two and beyond. Take your deck of bid cards and your seals and keep them secret. Draw two favor cards, keep one, and discard the other. Draw three ingredients from the deck for the apprentice level variant and two ingredients for the master variant. Assemble your cauldron and tear off a fresh notebook sheet to go at the bottom of your deduction board. Put the grants on the theory board and place your flasks on space 10 of the reputation track. The starting player token goes to whoever was most recently in a lab. Press the start new game button on the app. This will randomize the ingredients and alchemicals for your game. Write down the code from the app in case your dog eats your phone or you want to queue up the same configuration on multiple devices. There's a lot more to explore in Alchemists beyond what this video has covered. You can check out all of the artifacts and their powers or the perks the different favor cards give you. The manual shows you different techniques for making logical deductions beyond what I've covered. But this video is definitely enough to help you fake it till you make it in the world of magical academic publishing. Now you're ready to play Alchemists. Did you just watch that whole thing? Oh, hey, to 100% this video, click the badge to subscribe and then click the bell to get notifications when I've got new stuff.